right, folks, welcome into another exciting episode of I've Got a Theory. I'm your host, Hannes Polkel, and I've got two guests on, friends, coworkers, Chris Raya, who's on my team, and Zach Miller. Uh, appreciate you guys joining. They are forming a new podcast, and uh, they don't have a name for it yet, but they've been poking around ideas. And, and just for uh, full disclosure, they're on the other side of the glass from me over there, and I'm uh, in my office so I can see them through the window. We kept in different rooms for audio purposes since we don't have the, the, the most uh, robust audio systems yet. So welcome on, guys. Thanks for joining me uh, on a quick ad hoc episode of this show because you guys have a theory. <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, the theory that we wanted to talk about today was generally how um, there's, there's a belief that fortified foods are good for you and it's uh, kind of tricking and brainwashing society. Um, main example that I've been using is how like all the cereals out there, you know, full of sugar, lucky charms, you name it. They have hundred percent of your vitamins. It looks healthy. It looks good. Parents are buying it. Whole Kids grains. It. Yes. Whole grains. Yeah. It's like good for you. And theory is like, you can't really just sprinkle a bunch of vitamins on something that's not, um, like nutrition, nutritious to start with and live off that and be healthy. The other guy. Yeah, the other part to that is when you read about all of these vitamins, we don't really know what the proper requirements are on the daily. You know, there's this required daily allowance, but it's like we don't really know, you know, every individual is unique. Some people right, might need more B12 and other people, you know, they're deficient in vitamin C. And so like they're trying to use this cookie cutter approach to be like, oh, this is what everyone should be taking. Um, this is how much you should be taking of it. And that's not the case. And it's just, yeah, it's kind of upsetting that people can't go to the supermarket anymore and just buy food that is good for them. They have to do the research and look at the nutrient labels and, and kind of figure out what's going into their food. Well, assuming um, they're buying foods with nutrient labels, because I, I bet that most people would argue that the best foods don't have nutrient labels on them. Yeah, but you'd be surprised on how many people don't know that or, you know, it's even like, if you fall into these categories, like say you're trying to eat vegan, we were just having this conversation before my girlfriend sent me this chicken that she found at Sprouts, that's an alternative vegan chicken. And you would think, oh, hey, I'm eating vegan, I'm eating healthy. But the first ingredients were like water and sugar. And it's like, so even when you think you're going for these healthier options, it, it still could end up um, pretty bad for you. What so so <laughs> the thing like, is, is that, the, you know, these marketers are marketing towards people's health concerns but it's not as good as they might be, you know? So, cause it's, it's healthy isn't black or white. It's very much a gray area and it's different for each person, right? Yeah. Yep. So, you know, you mentioned that some people might have different requirements for their vitamins and minerals and stuff. Is there a way to figure that out? Could you do a blood test? Can you see a nutritionist and can they say, here's what you need? And wouldn't it, would it be great to have something that you could measure? Like if you had a smartwatch that you wore, and said, hey, you haven't had enough vitamin E today, you know, get some fish oil or something. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think and hope that's where the future is going. As far as now, I don't think the technologies are there, um, mainly because not too many people are concerned with it, you know, but like if you go to get food allergy testing or food intolerance testing, there's not many accurate tests out there. They'll say, you know, avoid certain foods like this, avoid foods uh, that contain that, but they're not too accurate. So um, as of now, it's kind of trial and error to see what works for different people. You know, there's a lot of these fad diets, you know, keto, paleo, carnivore, vegan. So it's like you have to take what you learn from each of those and apply that to yourself as an individual. I mean, me and Chris have both gone through our own um, sort of journeys on finding the best diet for us. And I guess our hopefully our nutritional, you know, fulfillments are being fulfilled from that. Yeah, no, so so share, I don't, yeah, share more about that because, you know, I know you guys both have unique stories of why you're so fitness and, and uh, nutrition minded. And it's not just because you want to be on the cover of Men's Health. Uh, it's, it's probably because you've got other health concerns that you want to live a long and healthy life. Is that, is that accurate? That's fair. Yeah, for the most part. And I, I've actually found taking more of a simple approach versus like a real scientific approach to like, oh, how many, you know, how many vitamins and how many calories do I need a day? Like when I, when I eat, I, there's things, certain things I don't eat, which would include something like Lucky Charms and ice cream. And it's more so just, you know, meats and veggies and a lot of things that don't have nutrition labels, like you mentioned, where I don't need to worry about counting how many calories I'm eating. I eat till I'm full. I eat when I'm hungry and I don't seem to have any 
issues from, from this route versus people who are going, oh, I need to get this exact amount of vitamins and this exact amount of calories, which sounds complicated. But Chris, it wasn't always like that, right? You know, you mentioned a few years ago, you, you did have to change your diet to accommodate for any kind of health kind of issues. So what prompted that change? What were you eating before? And, and, how, and how much has that improved or changed your, your health? Uh, yeah, so before I was eating a pretty typical diet, which included, you know, Pop-Tarts, pastas, cheeses, whatever, you know, whatever seemed good um, through experimentation um, and through a lot of troubleshooting of why does my stomach hurt all the time? Why do I have a lot of skin issues? Uh, things like that. And going, oh, there's a gluten-free diet. Oh, there's a vegan diet to try. Trying these different things, seeing that what worked and what didn't work. And now I've cut out all grains, anything with um, added sugar, uh, dairy completely. And now it's just meats, vegetables, almonds, nuts, things like that. And that's pretty much all of it. Yeah. And so do you ever, uh, you know, see a doctor or get a blood test to kind of check your, your health in some way to make sure that you are, you know, not vitamin deficient or anything? Uh, yeah, I actually just did that like a few weeks ago. Um, everything checked out normal and I did it maybe five or seven years ago before that. So I hadn't done it for a while, but everything seems. And then how, how did it relate to your results from several years ago? Um, everything was also normal back then too. Okay. So you, you can't, you can't say that your diet necessarily made a, a measurable effect, but for you, it's been a noticeable effect. Yeah. It's more uh, so, so like a short term effects, like, you know, something that you eat something and you feel weird like right after, not like a long-term, like you're deficient on something and you're ca causing like a long-term issue um, over, over time. And Zach, do you want to share, share your health story? Yeah, of course. So me and Chris are very similar in the fact that we started on this journey just due to frustration. Um, you know, I was going to doctors because I had persistent skin, uh, you know, acne, skin issues, um, and then digestive issues as well. And it just, I would go to one doctor, they would prescribe me antibiotics or they would, they would have some sort of bandaid, but would never suggest diet, never do anything like that. And so just years of frustration built up to the point where I started doing my own research and seeing what's going on with my health. Why, why is this happening? And then, you know, there was like these series of things that led up. It's like, you are what you eat. So what you put in your body is how it's going to react, what it's going to come out with. Um, and so that began this whole experimentation of just getting off of processed foods. I ate a lot of, you know, cheeses, like you said, nachos, hot dogs. Like I pretty much ate like a six year old my entire life until about 23. Along with that, I did have a bad environment. I was drinking a lot, you know, doing some, some recreational uh, activities, partying too much. And so it just all kind of built up. And then I just made the shift just one day. It was just an entire shift of my lifestyle. Um, started eating whole foods, you know, kind of went on like a, a little bit of a plant-based diet. And then I tried all the fad diets. So I've tried paleo, I've tried keto. Most recently I tried carnivore, which is only eating animal products. And it's like, you just kind of pick what you, you know, what works from all of these things and uh, apply it to your life. And kind of what you were just asking Chris about, like checking your blood work and, and checking all this stuff. It's, I don't know you know, even if you get the blood works and it, and it comes back okay, if your doctor isn't up to date in terms of everything that's going on in nutrition, he might not notice something or it might be, oh, you know, it just looks good, but he's not paying attention to, to certain things. Because, um, you know, cholesterol, for example, it's gotten a bad rap. It's like, oh, you got to avoid eating eggs because of the cholesterol. But they're finding now that that's not necessarily the case. You know, that helps to lubricate, you know, um, your veins and everything like that. So yeah, it's just, it's been a journey and uh, I'm happy where I ended up. Even if the blood tests don't say so, I know deep down I feel fantastic and you know, I'm on the right path. So are your, are your blood tests showing something different that, that you, you do have deficiencies? No. So I haven't been doing blood tests. You know, that's something I would like to, if I had the money, you know, if I had the unlimited budget, I would be, you know, going to these top doctors, getting all these tests done, not doing my own self tests. I was telling Chris back when I started this journey, I was reading so much about blood sugar. I bought a diabetes blood tester from CVS and I would prick my finger every time I ate and just wrote, write down the numbers and just see how it reacted. Like 
I had no idea what I was doing, but here yeah. I was just, you know, drawing blood and, and seeing how certain foods impacted, um, you know, my body. And so I would like to go get blood tests done by the right person and sort of see where everything's at. And that could kind of personalize it. You know, I've done um, certain genetic testings on like, you know, 23 and me, they'll have something and I've seen some other fitness ones, but I don't know how accurate that stuff is yet. Yeah, they're, they're always getting better data. I've done 23 and me as well. And every couple months, they'll say log back in and check your updated information because as they've accrued more data, they're able to refine it better and, and get more understanding. Um, yeah, this fitness thing is interesting. It's funny you make a, the joke about Lucky Charms because I remember eating Lucky Charms as a kid and having an incident with a pigeon that was t tagged and it got injured in my garage and we nursed it back to health with Lucky Charms. It ate just the it ate just the grain part and didn't like the marshmallows. Um, Interesting. And then that's, that's it. but you know, incredibly the, the pigeon recovered. So the lucky charms were lucky for the pigeon and, <laughs> yeah. and nursed it back to health. Yeah. But you know, my, you know, I have these same issues with my own kids uh, and I've been trying to avoid them from eating things like Cocoa Krispies and lucky charms. Uh, I've got them. I've got my, my oldest son who's five and a half hooked on crackling oat bran, which is like, distinctly a senior citizen food, um, but I enjoy it and I had it at the house and now he's hooked on it. We'll literally eat it three times a day because he you know, has, uh, has gotten the kid's aversion to most other foods. Um, so hopefully I can break him of that habit sooner than later. But my wife who, who has training in nutrition has stated that she's not too concerned. He's like, kids can process foods you know, a little bit differently than adults can. Because they're growing, they can kind of figure it out and, and make do with whatever you put into them. Um, obviously better is better, but you know, if he's just going to eat cereal three times a day, he's still going to grow and get big and eventually we'll keep making him try different foods so he can yeah. increase his palate for what's acceptable and learn what's healthy. Cause I know growing up myself, having immigrant family, you know, you have that big issue with diet, right? And you see this all over the world as people shift from their traditional ethnic diets from wherever they're from to the processed foods, because we're too busy to spend the time to cook and chop vegetables and put things together. You're trying to put something together quickly because you've got a hundred other things to do and that's today's modern world. And we see this cause problems in most developed countries with obesity levels. And it's effective, uh, you know, it's, it's surprising because countries like the United Arab Emirates has some of the highest obesity rates in the world. But that's because when we've been over there for the Middle East for military things, one of our biggest exports is fast food restaurants. So they love their Kentucky Fried Chicken, their Pizza Huts, their McDonald's. In fact, you, it's, it's shocking when you look up some of this stuff, you'll see McDonald's as beachfront properties in the UAE because they're like, you know, multi-million dollar properties and they're packed because people love it. And they've got a slightly higher obesity rate than Australia, which also has a similar issue, right? Yeah. You get these people that are working in mines or in industries like this. And they work, you know, two, three weeks on and get like a week off is kind of how these schedules work. But they're not cooking meals because they're in these remote areas. And so they just get whatever is fed to them, which involves a lot of fast food and pizzas and burgers and stuff. Uh, and people are very unhealthy. Uh, and so, yeah, I, it, there, there hasn't been enough focus on how to eat healthy at a consistent pace, right? Some people think like, oh, I ate a healthy meal this week. I'm good for the week. And and, or some, you know, and some people do the opposite, which is they'll eat healthy six days a week and then have one cheat day. And that reverts all of their, their past six days of, of, of being conscious about what they're eating. Um, but this has to really be a lifestyle thing. Do you guys have cheat days or do you kind of really are pretty regimented on like, whatever, I'm just going to eat it. And then, you know, I'm good and I'm going to have enjoyment and other things in my life, not necessarily what's on my tongue. Well, so I think me and Chris are different from the average population because I have plenty of friends that can go out and eat whatever they want and they feel fantastic. Whereas us, if we see something that has an ingredient that we can't, you know, we know doesn't work for us, it's not worth the, the pain afterwards. Like, you know, so I personally don't have any cheat days. You know, I'm at the point now where like, a piece of fruit sounds like a dessert to me. Like, you know, I don't have any temptations if you're eating Chick-fil-A in front of me or McDonald's. Like that doesn't even consider as food to me. Um, so yeah, most people, they can follow like an 80-20 rule. I've heard like 80% of the time eat healthy, 20% not so much. Um, but for us, I mean, like if I see a cheeseburger, you know, and I, I think of it, like it, it mentally pleases my brain. But as terms of my stomach in the next day or two, it, it's just not worth the 
the risk first for reward. So for yeah, me personally, same, yeah. same, same here, like no, not really any cheat days, like a cheat for me would be like, you know, maybe occasionally a few times a month, like a diet Coke, that would be bad. Cause it's obviously it's just full of chemicals and it's bad, but it tastes good, but it still avoids the sugar that I'm trying to avoid that has, gives me an instant effect, the aspartame or whatever chemicals they put in it may have some sort of a long-term effect, which isn't good, but uh, moderation, uh, fruit is another one too. So still has sugar, even though it's natural, a lot of sugar still would give me some negative effects. So fruit, I kind of see as a dessert more so than a brownie. I would never have a cheat day and eat like a brownie or a piece of cake or ice cream. Wow. That takes some, some uh, dedication. So, so your original theory was that fortified foods aren't necessarily as healthy as they claim to be. So what's our takeaway for our audience? You know, what's something that someone can do that's had skin issues or digestive issues or health issues? You know, how can they analyze their diet without having to go through as much trouble as you guys have to figure out what works? Is there, a, is there an easier way, right? That's what everyone's always looking for. What's the shortcut to figure out what I can and can't eat every day to, to make me feel 100%? Well, I would say the, the first point to that is kind of as soon as we brought the topic up to you, your initial reaction is, well, aren't the best foods the one without nutritional labels? <laughs> Nature, nature's got it right. Why try to mimic nature? You know, that's what all these manufacturers are doing. They're trying to say, oh, so they'll, they'll take the grain, right? A whole grain isn't necessarily bad for you, but then they'll strip it of everything and then try to add it back in. And it's like, you don't really know what you stripped out. So what are you adding back in? Or, and you can't, you know, completely reconfigure it to how nature intended. So the best foods to start off with is just eating whole foods. You know, we talk about this on our podcast is like, when you're going to the grocery store, try not to go in the aisles, you know, shop on the perimeter, go to your fruits and your vegetables, your meats, your seafoods, you know, stay on the outside. That's where all the, the better foods are for you. And then maybe go into the aisles for some condiments or something like that, but mainly shop on the, in the outside of the aisles and just, yeah, trust, listen to your body. You know, he was mentioning like eat when you're hungry and stop eating when you're full. A lot of these fortified foods, they, allow Americans and just people to just keep eating throughout the day, just yeah. grazing like cows almost like we're just nonstop eating. It's like your body isn't intended. You know, we're hunter gatherers. We would go out for these long days. We would eat a big meal and then we'd be good for a few days. And it's just like, that's kind of the uh, form that I'm trying to get back into with, yeah. with eating. Yeah. My takeaway would be there uh, for this would be like, don't be the person who, goes runs on the treadmill just so you can like eat some donuts like don't don't like be on the hamster wheel where you're just treading water like oh i can go eat a few donuts because i'm running a mile on the treadmill it's like you're not going anywhere you're not making any progress and if that's what you're trying to do just stay where you're at then i guess that kind of works but if you're like trying to fix some sort of problem lose weight uh run on the treadmill and then also don't eat the donuts because then you'll actually make progress <laughs> and uh you know for me you know i'm most of the food I eat, it's not out of the pantry. Like I have a pantry, I have some stuff in there, but most of the time I'm, I'm, I got Amazon delivery now from Whole Foods, eggs, bacon, salads, vegetables, some meats, and I make almost all my foods out of that. And when I order food uh, you know, from Postmates, it's similar. It's like salads with steak, just whole, whole ingredients, like no French fries, no chips on the side. It's just the whole foods. and that's So you're that's staying away from the carbs. You're staying away from the cheeses and you're staying with the milk products. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we hear this a lot. And so it's, it always seems easier said than done, right? It's hard to like, if you're in a crunch, you can't make a salad quickly, right? Just chopping the ingredients takes 10 minutes. Yeah. Right. I mean, so unless you're like do proper meal prep and are ready, one of the things that, that my family has been doing for years is uh, we've been getting like a meal kit sent to our house, uh, which has been helpful too. But, and for the most part, you know, they're, they're pretty average. You can choose leaner options. Otherwise the average ones are, are pretty good and they give you all the specs. So you make it and they'll tell you how many calories it's in it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I find that portion control is, is also important and not that I'm the fittest guy in the world, but yeah, trying to eat less um, seems to be relevant, right? It's, it's surprising by how little you can eat and still be functional. Once you can get yeah. over the, uh, the, the quantity that you used to eat before isn't filling your stomach and you have to kind of readjust your belly size to, okay, cool. Maybe a fist size of food, like they say is adequate, but you know, when you're eating salad, it's kind of a lot of airspace. So maybe you're doing three or four fists of salad versus yeah. one, yeah. You know, one fist. Of, right. 
Yeah. I mean, definitely if you're switching from what they call the standard American diet, which is, you know, a lot of processed foods and, and everything like that. When you first transition, I say go ahead and eat as much fresh food as you want. You know, similar to what you were saying, it takes a lot to right. fill up on a salad. Like your body's going to have to adjust. So like eat as much broccoli as you could stomach, eat as much kale as you could stomach. Like sure that in long term that might not be healthy for you because you're just taking in these massive quantities, but you'll see, you'll be surprised in like how much, you know, you could actually eat of these foods before you get full. And it's like, wow, that's what my body was used to getting before. Um, I definitely experienced that when I transitioned from the, the standard American diet is my smoothies would have like five dates in them, four bananas, like thinking back to that was hundreds of grams of sugar. Like right now that would put me in a coma or, or do something very adverse of a reaction. Yeah. Um, but my body needed that as a transition. Um, so yeah, in the, in the beginning, it's definitely going to be tough. And, you know, we've gotten to the point where it's more advanced. I, I can play around with diets. I can inter intermittent fast and not eat until noon. Whereas most people are like, oh, I need to eat as soon as I wake up. And, and you know, it's kind of just listening to your body and, and tweaking things along the way. So, so you guys aren't selling any nutritional products or coaching yet. Maybe you do one day in the future, but are there any people, books, um, resources that you recommend that people can look into, watch on YouTube, books to read that, that could be a good starting point um, in their journey of trying to, you know, lifetime nutrition and fitness? Sure. I don't know if I have any. Oh, okay. Off, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there's one podcast that I actually showed Chris. It's called The Model Health Show. Uh, um, he's got a yeah. lot of good advice, not only into nutrition, but just, you know, I think of it as like a, as a package deal. Like you can't just improve you know, they always say you can't outwork a bad diet. Like you can't just go to the gym, like you were saying, and run on the treadmill and still eat McDonald's and donuts all day. So, you know, you kind of have to look at all aspects of your life while you're improving diet. And, you know, now that you're eating cleaner foods, you'll have more energy to go work out and then you'll be more proactive at work. And then you'll be a better husband or, uh, you know, better to your spouse. And it's just like, it all kind of goes hand in hand. So yeah, the model health show um, in terms of books, I mean, there's like uh, this book from Weston A. Price, uh, Nutritional Degeneration, I believe it's called. Basically, this dentist went around to all of these tribes back in like the 1800s, and he was documenting what they were eating. And there's all these diseases that came from them eating Americanized foods and like all this processed foods, whereas when they stuck to their natural diet, it was much better, kind of as you touched on before. Um, so yeah, it, it kind of depends on where you're at in your journey. There's some good documentaries as well, like what the health and, um, I'm trying to think of some other ones right now, but I remember seeing forks over knives. Yeah. Yeah. Forks over knives. Some of them very, like if there's a new one, game changers, which is focused on like Arnold Schwarzenegger is in it. Uh, and they're really pushing a plant-based diet. And so if someone's off, they might get steered and think, you know, that's the problem with the internet nowadays is I can find you an article that says cheese is great for you. And then I could find another article that says cheese will kill you. So it's like, you have to take what you hear the most of and kind of apply some common sense. So with documentaries and books, like you can read something and be so convinced on a plant-based diet, but then for, you know, whatever reason, it doesn't work for you. And people push that even though, you know, it's not right for them. Yeah. Well, interesting. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on and sharing uh, with us. There's a uh, this this is a hot topic for a lot of people, and it, it, and Zach, I'm, I'll tell you right now that when your friends get to my age or within about third in their mid thirties, they're not going to just be able to eat anything with no consequences. Because I saw this transformation and transition happen with a lot of my friends, where in their twenties, in their late twenties, even potentially in their early thirties, eat and drink anything, live however they wanted. Uh, and then it starts to catch up. They're like, oh, yeah. wait, okay. So now I'm starting to get hangovers. Mm -hmm. Now I'm starting to feel lethargic. I need a nap after I eat a sandwich, things like that. So mm -hmm. uh, it'll catch up to them. So don't, so don't uh, envy them just yet because they're setting, they're setting bad habits for themselves. Um, I saw this quote and I did a show with a friend, Jose, yesterday. And he had a quote in, in his uh, presentation. It was like, you can't predict the future, but you can set your habits. And your habits set your, predict your future. I like right? that. And so that's very true with what you guys are proposing is that get your health right and that'll predict your future. Of course. Yeah. Awesome. Chris, Zach, thank you for joining me. Any last thoughts? Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thanks, Hanish. Yeah. yeah we'll thanks for joining on. Um, with another great episode of I've Got a Theory. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see everyone next time.